So Create Studio lets you change the anchor point of where animations may be started. And I'm gonna show you a few options. I am by far an expert, so I'm just really gonna show you the basics and then you can play around with it. And I have a few that I've made that I can show you. And then I also have a couple that are in Create Studio elements or their scenes so that you can see how they do it as well. So let's start with this text. So this can also, I thought I'd start with this one because this can also apply when you're doing things like a text loading, you know, the, the dots when it's showing a text is loading, or you can do it with a bunch of different types of elements. So right here, I have my two characters and then I have the Memoji guy saying it's excellent and then the Memoji girl agreeing with him. So all this is, both of these, this and this are both the same in that when you look inside of it, it's just the text bubble and the text. And if you go to the studio and, and type in text bubble, you could probably even do just bubble. Um, you're gonna find a ton of them. So you can choose what you want, and there are some scenes that have them as well. And I know that there's more than just what's showing here, so the keyword didn't pick up on everything. So I have my text bubble in my text. I grouped those, and then I animated the group. And what I did is I animated it with position and scale, and the easing, I used smooth for this one. I used a different one for there. For the Memoji Girl, I wanted to try a few different out. Let's just even try linear here. And then at the end, it's 100% and it went up. What you want to look at now that is different is you can move the anchor point. Here, if you click, you can see where the anchor point is with that little purple circle with the arrow. So here, it's coming up from this corner from this part of it. For the Memoji Girl, it's the same, except I have it starting from the top, not the bottom, because it's coming downward instead of up. So here, the anchor point is up here, instead of like the Memoji Boy, who it's in the bottom corner. I don't think I hit that, there we go. I'm going to show you a little bit more about what happens when you change those, but let's just look at what I did here with our little fungi ku kubu, kubu, kubo. I don't know what he is. I actually did two different animations for this. So I did the same thing is I had a text bubble and the text and I grouped it and that is right in here. And I actually should have this extended a bit more. I'll show you what I did. So in this group, let's open the group. It has the text and the text bubble. I grouped that and then I used a motion loop animation. And I just did rotation with a swing. But when I looked in here, I noticed that I had it down to here. So I'd like it to go the whole time. So I'm gonna click and drag it for as long as I want it. And let's see what happens if I make it two loops instead of one. And then you can even change how much it rotates. You can have it rotate just a little, or you can have it rotate to a bigger degree. You can decide what you want with that. So I rotated those in that group. Then I grouped it again. I selected it and I, you can't do it. That's why I had it like that. If you, if you try to select it when it has the animation part in there or any keyframe, it's not going to let you do that. But you can see how I have it grouped again. This is the group with the text in the bubble. I added the animation. 
Then I grouped it again, so I'm using Command G. Now I'm going to undo that, but that's what you do. I already did that, and that's what this group is. And then I animated that it grew here instead of coming as a whole unit. So what I did here was the same thing that I did with the Memoji um, guy and girl. I had the position and scale. I used linear and the anchor point. Oh, there isn't an anchor point. It just came from the bottom because that's where I had it. But I wanted to show you this anchor point. That was at the bottom right here because I wanted it to come, I wanted it to wiggle from that point. If I were to put it up here, up at the top, let's see what that does to it. See how that then makes it kind of go a little bit more wild. It's, it's um, more stationary where the anchor point is. So it's swinging from here. And I don't think I really like that. That's not what I wanted. I wanted it to come from the bottom point. So you can change where you have the, anime, um, the anchor point. So say then we put it from the center, which I believe is the default. Now it kind of, it still wiggles. It's not that bad. But for me, I really wanted it to be stationary at the point of the text bubble. So I thought I undid that. There we go. So now it's there. Now I just made a bunch, I made one, two, three, I made four squares that were masking a gradient. So I went into studio, backgrounds, gradient. I believe it's this one. Then all I did is I rotated them. So the first one, we go to the start. The first one was straight. Then I did a little bit of rotation to start and then a rotation just to give that kind of pinwheel type of thing or like a flower if you did a different shape than a square. And then I just animated those with, I used Expo for some of them. I wanted to try different, I'm not very creative when I'm using <laughs> the, the um, easings. So I thought I would try a few more. And then I used rotation. So what you'll notice here is the square at the top. If we click on the beginning, you will see the rotation is at zero right here. And at the end, I had it go around multiple times. With the one underneath it, it started at zero, and then I had it just go to, I gotta get back to the properties, 720, uh, it went a little bit more so that it's a little off. It shouldn't be off like that, but it is. And then I just did the same thing to all of them. And then I gave the first one a good shadow. Um, oh, it's shadowed inside the group. So let's go in there. If we open the group, you'll see that I have a shadow on that. So it, oh, the shadow got, I guess they, Got rid of my shadow, so it doesn't matter. You don't need that. What you did see in there is I had a little character. Then I wasn't sure that I really liked it. Um, so I made him hidden. Why am I not? There we go. I didn't really like how he looked in there, but you could do something like that. Whoop. Where is he? He's in the next one. 
So he kind of went around and he got dizzy. Now here I used some different rotation points for each of the squares. And I started with, I changed the sequence of what I was going to show you. Um, so in my mind, I'm a little, a little off. Um, this all started because of this one. I used this animation in a, in another tutorial. So it, I had it in my mind. It is in your studio. If you look under the animated tiles, it is right there. And the reason I wanted to show you this is because if you notice right here, this is growing from the left top corner, from nothing, from zero, and it grows out to the bottom. So I wanted to play around with that to show you some of what you can do with that. So let me just increase my timeline a little so I don't keep overlapping on those. So what I did is I just had four different squares and they grew out. Now this isn't so clever. I think you definitely wanna make this a little bit more interesting, but it was just for the purposes of here. I had them all coming from their relative corners and then the rotation point rectangle came from the center. So if we look at the square, the blue square, and we go in and we look at the anchor point, here it is right here in the upper left. And then I have the animation for all of them as the same that we had before, the position and the scale. And I used soft for this one. I was just trying different ones to see what they might look like. The green one has the anchor point up on the left, on the right corner. And I'm sure you can guess where these are gonna be. The anchor point here is in the lower right. The pink square has the anchor point in the lower left. So that is what makes it grow from the corner and move up. If I and then with the um, group, that's just center. Oh, it doesn't even show it. It must be in the group where, yeah. See how I put show anchor point? It does have the center anchor point. In this group, I have the text and the square group. So it, the, this is where the anchor point is coming from is the grouping of those two. So I think what really might be um, informative is if we changed this, right now, remember it's the upper left. Let's say we do from the bottom right. Now it would grow from there, which wouldn't really follow the lines of the the image, but the, just for some visual, if I did center, it's going to come from the center. Ditto. I don't think you need me to show them all, but there we go. You can change them to wherever you want them. And for bobbleheads, this is just one of the scenes in the bobblehead. If you go to scenes, and you get the bobblehead scenes. It's right in there. I think it's at the, there it is right there, the dance party. And here they just have the um, anchor point. If we look at our characters, so our middle guy, if we look at the anchor point, they actually had that in the center. So let's go in there so you can see. Here's the face, and the anchor point is in the center. So it's moving it there. If we moved it to the upper left, it's still moving. I'm not really as clear on how it may be changing things. You'd probably go into here, and you could see here it's the bottom 
at the chin. If we changed it here, it's going to have a weird. We don't want that to happen, right? Look at him. <laughs> that's not going to be good. So that's how you can see why it's important to know about your anchor points. So just a quick video to show you a few ways for the anchor point. And hopefully that gave you some ideas. And if you didn't even know about it, now you do. Have fun.